I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Here's a problem that we all have to deal with. Video transmitters. Knocking people out of the air. Because you plugged in when you weren't supposed to. And now some ah, unplug, unplugged, who plugged in? Ah, and now somebody's crashed their quad and everybody's mad at you. And pit mode is supposed to solve this problem. Pit mode means that your video transmitter powers on at a very, very low output power. So low that if you're more than 10 feet away, then you can't even really pick it up. And yet, pit mode's not perfect. I've seen people get interfered with even when a video transmitter's in pit mode just because somebody plugged in and went right next to them on the flight line. Did doofus, don't do that. Pit mode's not perfect. What if there was a device that let you actually power down your video transmitter using an aux switch on your transmitter? Well, you guessed it, there is such a device. And that's what we're gonna look at today. This innocuous little device is the real pit, and it's the key to what we're talking about today. It's not actually anything complicated. It's just a, tr a little transistor on a circuit board that you wire up, and it, the power for the video transmitter comes into the real pit, and a signal line comes into the real pit, and that signal line comes from your flight controller and is used to switch the transistor on and off and switch your video transmitter on and off. That's really all there is to say about it. You now understand exactly how it works. So let me just show you how to set it up. This Holy Bro Copus Ready to Fly is quickly becoming my go-to guinea pig for all new functions that I test out. It's got GPS on it. I put Crossfire on it recently. So let's go ahead and put the real pit on it as well. But while we're doing that, I'll go ahead and I'll stick up a wiring diagram so you can see generically how to install the real pit on you know, whatever you've got. That battery plus is going to be whatever you're using to power the VTX. So it says bat plus on there, but if you were powering your VTX off five volts, presumably it would still work. You would just connect five volts to bat plus. And right here is the plug for the video transmitter. And here's video transmitter power, which is in fact five volts. So we're gonna find out whether five volts is gonna work. What I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to disconnect that and we're going to connect that to the real pit. Okay. And the power wire going to the video transmitter is going to get soldered to VTX plus on the real pit. I'm just going to grab this spare orange wire I have laying around. I know, I know, power should always be red, shouldn't it? But I just have this spare orange wire laying around and we're going to use that for power. So in this case, that's going to go to the 5-volt pad on the flight controller that we're taking our power from. Wherever the VTX was hooked up, that's where this wire is going to go. Alrighty, so here, 5 volts to BAT+, plus, VTX+, plus to the video transmitter plug. Then we got to do ground, which is easy. I'm going to use this other spare wire, a green wire. Green is actually remotely appropriate for ground. In some uh, electrical systems, green is used for, to denote ground. And, oh. Oh, would you look at that? I had a black wire this whole time. Now black wire is going to be signal, and that's going to confuse everybody, but there you go. Okay. The signal wire needs to go to an unused pin on your flight controller. Examples of these pins include, well, the LED strip. If you're not using programmable LEDs, that pin's going to work. If you have extra motor outputs, like this flight controller has a motor five and motor six in case you wanted to run a hexacopter. Well, I'm not. So that's probably an easy thing for me to use. Another pin that's pretty much guaranteed to work is the PPM pin. If you have a PPM input for a PPM receiver, you're probably not using that. And here and right here is M5. And that's where we're gonna solder this signal wire.
Now in order to set this up, we're going to need to choose a switch on the transmitter to control whether the video transmitter is turned on and off. And one way some people like to do it is by using a potentiometer because they worry that if you accidentally flip the switch while you're flying, your video transmitter will cut off and you'll crash. It's really hard to accidentally flip a, a potentiometer. That's a nice thought. I'm going to do it a little differently. The way I have my arming set up is two-stage arming. And that means that to arm the quad, first I flip this switch, which basically means we're hot. And then I pull this switch, which means that we actually arm. Kind of like you put the key in the ignition, and then you crank the car, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this switch be VTX on, which means I can easily turn my VTX on and off when I'm, if I'm, you know, just getting ready to fly or if I just want to test it out on the bench, but I can still arm with this and it doesn't take up any additional switches or sort of change the fundamental function of how my transmitter works. And in order to do that, I'm going to press menu and go to the mixer. So the simplest way to do that is just pick an unused aux channel, like channel eight here and we'll add a new mix and the source is going to be this switch so what i'll do sorry i went a little quick there what i'll do is i'll go down to the source i'll press enter one time so it's blinking and then i'll flip the switch one time and it will fill that switch in as the source and now that's all you need to do you can see right here as i flip that switch the channel moves up and down so here in betaflight i'm going to go straight away to the cli and i'm going to type resource and what I want to find in there is the pad that I used on the flight controller to connect the signal wire to the real pit. So in my case, that's motor 5. I'm going to read resource motor 5 CO9. And CO9 is the relevant information that I'm going to want to remember. That's the pin number. If you used uh, the LED strip pad, then you're going to look for resource LED strip 1. That's the you know programmable LED output on your flight controller. If you used one of your UART TX or RX pads, then you're going to look here, resource serial TX1. That's UART1 TX, UART2 TX, UART3 TX, UART4 TX, and RX pads for UARTs 1 through 7. If you're going to try and use some other pins, one of these pins will probably work. So in my case, I'm using motor 5, and the pin I want to remember is C09. Then I'm going to type these commands. First, I'm going to type resource motor 5 none, and that's going to clear motor 5 off of pin C09. Then I'm going to type set pin IO underscore box equals 40, comma 41, comma 42, comma 43. This is a mystical, magical incantation that you just have to do it exactly this way. Then you're going to type aux 2421600210100. And then finally, we're going to type resource pin, pin IO 1 and the pin number from before, C09 in my case. And then we're going to type save. And then if we go to the modes tab and scroll down, we're going to find some additional modes that weren't there before. User 1, user 2, user 3, and user 4. And in this case, user 1, that is the mode that we're going to use to switch the video transmitter on and off. Now here in the Betaflight modes tab, I'm going to choose that aux channel. And the easiest way to do that is to just set the aux to auto and then flip the switch one time and it'll fill in which aux channel I just moved. Now, I'm going to put the switch into the on position. Okay, so that's the position the switch is going to be in when I want the VTX enabled. And I'm going to drag this mode over so the yellow part covers that on position and hit save. And now that aux mode is active. And I should see here in the real pit as I flip the switch that this red LED comes on and goes off, indicating that power is being switched on and off. That's it. Now I can plug in the VTX and just verify that it's working as expected, but it really should be at this point. So I've got my wiring right and everything. Let's just see if the VTX powers on when I flip the switch. There we go. Isn't that exciting? You can actually have up to four of these guys on your quad, each one controlling an accessory that draws as much as one amp of power. In fact, you could put multiple things on a single one. It doesn't just have to be a VTX. If for some reason you wanted to switch your VTX and your receiver off, like 
I've heard that MultiGP is going to start allowing people to bring multiple quads to practice heats. And if you crash out, well, if you want to put another quad up in the air during the practice heat, you can. But you need a way to disable the quad that you crashed out on the course. Putting your video transmitter and your receiver on one of these switches, assuming the current is less than one amp, will let you totally disable the quad and power it down. You could just immediately plug in another quad and go finish your practice heats. That's a pretty esoteric thing. But if you wanted to be able to switch LEDs on and off, if you had any function that you want to be able to switch on and off using cameras, anything, you can plug it up to one of these and it's just as easy as that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you really enjoyed it. This is such a cool product. I'm gonna be putting it on all my quads going forward. The ability to plug in and change uh, maybe video transmitter settings. If you've got Lua scripts, you could even change your channel using your Lua scripts. And then it'll write the change or to the flight controller and then you can power up and boop, you'll come up on the right channel. So cool, so cool. There's a link in the video description to this product. And if you use that link, I sure do appreciate it. It's an affiliate link at this job. You probably heard by now, this is my full-time job and using those affiliate links is one way you can support me by making any purchase, not just the linked product. Click that link before you make any purchase at one of these linked vendors and it sure does help me out. Let me know if you got any questions. Did you get it working? If you didn't get it working, leave me a comment or heck, just message me on Facebook and ask me. I help everybody. Thank you guys. Happy flying.